Albrecht Durer's The Resurrection, from his large passion, depicts a moment of spiritual triumph. Holding a banner which symbolizes his victory over death, Christ stands on top of his own tomb slab. His other hand offers a sign of blessing, which indicates that this resurrection is not only for Christ himself, but is also for the viewer. This blessing sign visualizes the larger purpose of Durer's devotional narrative image. In the foreground, soldiers are asleep. In the background, at the right, at least two soldiers are amazed by what they see. One might even say that they don't believe what they see. In fact, the relationship between seeing and believing is a central theme of this print and of Durer's art more broadly. More often than not, works of art pose questions rather than answers. Durer's devotional narrative imagery asks if seeing is in fact believing. Conversely, the print explores how faith can be the foundation for a transformed sense of vision. These questions are essential to the process and purpose of Durer's sacred art. The mutual dependency between faith and sight was an undercurrent theme throughout much of Durer's sacred art. Working in a historical period in which the role of the visual arts and the sense of sight were being disputed, prints such as the Resurrection made a subtle case for the importance of the devotional narrative image. As a German artist working on the eve of the Protestant Reformation, Albrecht Durer was very much concerned with the relationship between faith and sight. This woodcut's dramatic opposition of light and darkness, created by the actual relationship between the printed ink and the paper, makes the figure of Christ immediately readable. One can imagine turning the pages of the large passion and having the figure of Christ visually leap off the page. However, Durer's visual language communicates theological meaning. Christ's radiance visualizes how his resurrected body has been transfigured. At the same time, the clear delineation of Christ's body gives him physical solidity. Durer's use of line and light describes how Christ is fully human and fully divine. While the subject is immediately readable, the potential spiritual implications of Durer's image unfold more slowly. To describe how this image cultivates a relationship between faith and sight, we need to pay attention to Durer's use of pictorial space. Pictorial space is the illusion of three-dimensional space in an image that is actually only two-dimensional. The point of pictorial narrative space is to convince the viewer of what they see, to convince the viewer that the image is in fact reality. In the 21st century, many viewers accept and even expect the illusion of pictorial narrative space in images. However, in the early 16th century, Durer's use of pictorial narrative space would have amazed many of his contemporary viewers. Important advancements had been made in the theory and practice of creating pictorial narrative space during the 14th and 15th centuries. However, many of the artists who were most proficient and creative with pictorial narrative space were Italian. Durer's two trips to Italy made him more familiar with the compositional and theological uses of pictorial narrative space. The Resurrection is a 1510 print from the Large Passion series. Durer had begun this series as early as 1497 and worked on it between then and 1499. Then he stopped work on the Large Passion series for about a decade before returning to complete it. If we compare Durer's 1510 The Resurrection and his 1497 Agony in the Garden both from the Large Passion, 
we can see how his approach to the visual, compositional, and even theological use of pictorial narrative space had dramatically matured. While Agony in the Garden is a compelling image with many important qualities, it also evidences Durer's struggles with the problem of convincingly situating figures within pictorial narrative space. For example, Christ seems to float above his disciples rather than solidly occupying a space behind them. The Lamentation, also from the Large Passion, completed in 1499, demonstrates how Durer had solved this problem of creating a convincing illusion of three-dimensional pictorial space. Durer's visual method draws the viewer into the scene to join those who mourn the dead Christ. In the resurrection, Christ seems to be stepping out of a spiritual space into the natural world of the soldiers who are in various states of slumber and awe. This work demonstrates that by 1510, Durer had so thoroughly mastered the use of pictorial space that he was able to work creatively with it. In this print, Durer's advancements in the use of pictorial narrative space served a spiritual purpose. By visually convincing the viewer of the reality of the resurrection, the image also spiritually confirmed Durer's presumed 16th century Christian viewer's faith in Christ. Durer's image also explores how faith impacts sight. The composition begins with the sleeping soldier in the lower left. This man's pose directs the viewer's attention towards the right. In the lower right, there is a sleeping man who is radically foreshortened. This reclining figure and the others behind him direct the viewer's gaze towards Christ. As Christ steps forward, Durer's composition succeeds in visually connecting the viewer and Christ. However, in the process of moving the viewer through the composition, Durer subtly but significantly changes the viewer's optical orientation. Durer's skillful design becomes more apparent if we divide the image into three parts and pay attention to the point of view implied in each section. The bottom third of the image suggests one visual direction. The men in the foreground are seen from above. For example, the man in the lower left has his legs crossed and the viewer sees the top of his legs. Also, Christ's feet are seen from above. All of these indicate a downward-looking orientation of sight. The middle area of Durer's composition suggests that the viewer is now looking in a new direction. The men in this part are seen more straight on. Christ's body is also depicted from the viewer's eye level. However, the top section of Durer's print suggests yet another visual direction. Christ's raised arm and his face are seen from below. This creates an upward-looking visual orientation. As the viewer reads the image, starting in the lower left, and moving towards Christ, there is a gradual shift in the point of view depicted. Durer's mastery of pictorial narrative space makes this illusion entirely believable. However, the shifting point of view of Durer's composition is more than a clever visual trick being pulled on the viewer by the artist. Durer's complex depiction of figures in space, especially his treatment of the figure of Christ, suggests how the viewer's sense of sight can be transformed by faith. In visually moving through Durer's composition, the viewer's sense of sight is uplifted, or perhaps we should say that it's raised. This shift is not dramatic. The artist doesn't want to make this shift of visual direction a distraction from the viewer's meditation on the subject. In fact, this transformation of sight is part of the blessing that Christ offers the viewer. Albrecht Durer's devotional narrative image is the visual messenger of this spiritual blessing.